Hello everyone, this is Ronin speaking. Uh, welcome to this video of Space Engineers. Today we are going to look at rotor basics and their functions as well as the seamless integration into your ships and stations. So let's start by looking at the basics of rotors. Now, if you place your rotor here, the first thing that you should know is that you cannot get it to fit to the walls of oh, sorry about that to the walls of your stations or ships so ha uh, so basically you're always going to have a gap whether it's on the f on the bottom or on the sides or on the top as you can see here however there is one point where you don't have a gap and that is from the point where you actually placed your rotor. As you can see here, perhaps we'll go underneath. You have your rotor here and there's no, I mean, the gap is really, really small and you can't fit anything through here. So this is the only point where when you build a rotor you won't have any gap with your ship or station and that's very important to keep in mind when you're making designs especially when you're making doors. As you can see here, this door, there's no gap. This is a two rotor door, again, no gap. So let's take a look at the rotor. Now, on or off, you can name the rotor. Reverse just reverses the velocity here. So if I click on reverse, it went from negative 1.92 to positive 1.92. And this, of course, reverses the rotation of the rotor, which is particularly useful for doors and wheels, um, which I'll show you off in a little bit. The torque here is how fast the motor will accelerate. So, as you can see here, the strength of the motor, how fast it will accelerate, applied when motor is turned on. So this is obviously only relevant when it's turned on. I usually don't keep it to maximum torque, I bring it down a bit because I don't want things to accelerate too quickly unless you're in a vehicle. Oh. Um, the braking torque, I usually keep this, this at maximum because I want whatever it is, whether it's a door, whether they're wheels, whether whatever, I just want it to stop as fast as quickly as possible. Um, but that's up to you as well. This is really good as well when your rotor is off. When your rotor is off, it won't move if you have this at maximum strength. Um, if you have it at low strength, it might take... I mean, it will stop, but it will take longer. And uh, if you're flying around, it might wobble around a little bit if you don't have uh, landing gears activated, whereas it will be more secure with maximum braking torque. The lower limit um, and the upper limit, this is basically the limit that you're imposing to the rotor's rotation. So the minute, it's just going to continuously rotate. But if you apply limits, whatever whatever the limits these are, it'll only rotate between these two angles. So this is very useful for stuff like doors, um, but not so useful for the wheels of a vehicle, for example, where you want a continuous rotation. Okay, here you can see an example of unlimited rotation on the top. Uh, it's also important to note that whatever you put on top of a rotor will not be uh, connected with the rest of the ship, which means that you need to have another power source on top of that rotor to make anything work which requires power on top of it, um, or to activate things. So here as you can see, I have a power generator on top which is powering both lights, and you can see here the ground clamps this isn't basically two rotors here which activate these clamps well which rotate these clamps up and down and here I needed to put oh I needed to put um, power generators so that I can actually turn these clamps well these landing gears on or off so if I go ahead and turn this one off or rather I unlock it, sorry. Now I'm going to be able to 
uproot one of them. I misclicked there. Now you'll notice that with the new patch you can also make um, action groups which is really useful for stuff like this and doors. And as you can see the one which is still clamped down is not moving even though I've activated the rotation whilst the other one has come up. Um, so let's go ahead and deactivate this one and as soon as I've deactivated this as you can see it's going up as well. So that's basically reversing the velocity, very useful. Uh, here I have all my wheels grouped into one. The same thing goes for wheels. Here we're going in, oh, we're going in reverse. And if I just click on reverse, it'll go forwards. Alright, so this is my beautiful ship from the outside. Uh, it was only builds for this video which is why it's so damn ugly and here's our first door oh there's a little bit of damage on top but that must have been me having fun shooting it up right starboard hangar door reverse the velocity and here we go it's opening as I said it's seamless here there's just one rotor activating this door and rotating it on the other side, we have a two rotor door, same principle, but with two rotors. A little bit more complicated to build than a single rotor, of course, it takes a little bit more time, but it's not very difficult either. And here you see that it opens up at this. Looks like one's opening up a little bit quicker than the other one, but uh, a little bit faster, but I think that. Huh. Maybe one's a little bit heavier, I don't know. Although they... I think they're the same size, so... Anyway, it doesn't matter. They should fall into place at the same time. Oh, okay, one's a little bit faster. I'm not sure why. Um, but that doesn't really matter anyways. So let's go ahead and close these. And whilst they close, I'm going to go ahead and open the top one which is the torpedo bay door as you can see it's all very simple all of these doors are I mean there's no gap so you can't actually see that there's a door there unless you come close or unless you're I don't know unless you have I mean can you tell that this is a door this one on the right I don't know not necessarily especially if you camouflage it well so here we are the doors closing there we go, no damage to the door. Uh, there's a little bit of gap here, but that just autocorrects itself. There we go. Now the top here, uh, I'll go ahead and rotate the the um, torpedo bay around so that we can launch the torpedo. And I hope I have not for... Oh, I forgot to activate... Oh no. I forgot to deactivate the artificial mass of our little moon vehicle and well that's gone for a toss okay so we're back uh, I've actually disconnected the gravity field and activated the clamps on my little moon rover now so it's not gonna go flying out who knows we might need need it to demonstrate something later on so now let's go ahead and activate the torpedo bay now the torpedo bay is not a door, it's just a 180 degree rotating platform and this is useful to hide things from the enemy's view. I mean I don't know, I just find this pretty neat when you want to um, swivel something around like that. I'll show you another, um, another use of swiveling platforms in just a bit, but let's just go ahead and activate this. So let me just go ahead and arm this uh, torpedo by activating the the actor and the gravity fields and let's go ahead and release that. Unfortunately I don't have a target above it and I'm too lazy right now to put one. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. So, yeah. Maybe next time I'll put a target. Let's go ahead and 
show you our little fighter hangar bay. Now, here I have two fighters inside the ship. And below below that I have well well there's a little bit of damage here so you can see that there's actually a gap, but uh looks like nothing. Um looks like this is just a room, a sealed room, but actually it is a launch platform. So if we come underneath the ship Activate this door. And now oh, now all I need to do is activate the where is it? The landing bay platform. And here we go, we get into our fighter. I, f I think this is pretty cool for carriers and stuff like that, uh, or even in stations. It's it's hidden away from from any other person's view, and uh, I don't know. It's just kind of cool, you know. You get into your ship, you activate something, and then it just brings you out into space. You turn on your engines, disable the parking, uh, sorry, the landing gears, and you're off. Now, this is our piston, which is built from three rotors. And in this case, it's a, a platform that elevates itself, but you can also build elevators or doors in this manner. But first, let's go ahead and take a look inside here. And here we have oh, a turret. A manual, well, a manable turret, let's say, that I forgot to secure in place with that landing gear. That's another thing that's very important. For all your uh, rotors and designs, make sure that each of them can be locked into place by a landing gear. That's why I have so many landing gears here, because each rotor has its own landing gear. So let's go ahead and open the turret bay door. Now, this one has a landing gear that I can activate or deactivate as you can see here on the side here if I activate it it just stops it so whenever your door or your rotor or your platform whatever it is is not being used just make sure that you lock it into place so let's bring about the turret again this is a swiveling platform, you just get into your turret. Same principle as uh, as with the other um, the landing platform. So there you go, your turret is now ready to be used, ready to fire on enemies. This turret design is not a good design. Uh, I just did this really quickly. I didn't bother with the recoil, so this actually has a lot of recoil. If I just keep firing, yeah, you can see that. Um, and here you can see how these rotors work. So what I did is I put a few gyroscopes, I think one or two gyroscopes inside, one, power, one or two power generators to power up the rocket launchers and the gyroscopes and the machine guns. And what that allows you to do is this rotor has no braking torque, so it's off and it'll just swivel around as much as you want it to. Same with this one. And here you have the horizontal rotation and here you have the, ro the vertical rotation. So that's how you build a manual turret. I put a landing gear on the back so that I can secure the turret in place so that when I'm flying around this doesn't move all around and potentially hit stuff or break off or stuff like that. So This is secure now. So next up we have the piston, so let's go ahead and activate that. Uh, this is just the one rotor door, you know, same as the other one on, on this side, same as this. And here you can see that the turrets are way inside the ship. I think this is it, yeah, this is it. 
and by activating this piston it just pushes the platform outward and come on hurry up right and now you have your turrets facing the exterior of the ship so this again quite nice if you want to hide some stuff inside um, I made a whole tutorial on automatic elevators which is basically this principle so if you wanna if you wanna see how those are made just check out my my other video um, right now I'm not gonna focus on this one too much because it'll take a lot of time to explain properly um, what I'll do is I'll just show you guys how to make these single rotor doors, dual rotor doors, and perhaps I'll also show you how to make quad rotor doors. Here's just a copy pasted ship. What happens when you copy paste is that it doesn't actually copy the um, the rotors that you've put in, it just you just end up with part of the rotor here and that's it, nothing that you build on it. So that'll allow me to build it quickly. Now single rotor door very simple. All you need to do is make sure that on each side, up and down, you have the same amount of blocks. So three up and three down. And the center one is where the rotor is. Over here. That increases the stability of your door. You don't want it wobbling about or bugging. And then you just close it like this. I'm not sure why I have blocks here. And there you have it. That's your door. Took like 10 seconds to make. And there's no gap. So this is the easiest thing you can do. Now let's go ahead and... Well over here it's the same thing. Yeah. For the swiveling platform all you need to do... Yeah here you can see how it is when you copy paste. So take this out. Put a new one in. All you need to do... Again try and have an equal distance on both sides then build the length oh maybe not like this no right and that's your platform so now that you have these in place you need to make sure that you have the correct angles set up the lower limits and the upper limits so we have the current angle at zero degrees which is what we want Okay, it's moved a Please just make this manually enter rule, that'd be really good. Okay, so it, it's moved downwards a bit, so we know that the rotation... Um, the positive rotation will make this go clockwise, and the negative rotation will make it go anti-clockwise. So, that's up to you, what you want. In this case, we'll make it clockwise, We'll put it to, let's say, 180 degrees. Come on, come on. Alright, close enough, whatever. And crank up the velocity. So there you have your door functioning properly. All you need to do now to close it is to reverse the velocity. Uh, same thing here. For platforms, you want to make sure that, I mean, for swiveling platforms, you want to make sure that you set the angle of 180 degree difference from wherever your starting point is so that it does a full rotation um, and shows the other side of the platform. All right, now for the two rotor door design, you need to make sure that you start off with rotors on the same level. So basically, this rotor has to be in line with this one. The second thing you need to do is you need to make sure that from one rotor to the other you have an uneven number. So here we have 13, we're good. That way the midpoint will be block number 7. So we can build up to 6. And we can go ahead and make it even on both sides so we have three up here that means that we need to have three down here so if this is the midpoint and we want to have a kind of um, 
downward sloping design what you need to do is you can start from here and work up towards the top and then you can continue doing so until you reach the bottom now for the other one what you need to do you just fill in everything that you can oh, it's already moved a little bit but that's okay that way it becomes easier to fill in the the gaps after that right now that you've done this you need to get one of the two door parts out of the way so these would be the last ones that I put in uh, current angle 2 alright so we would like this one at a negative 180 degree and 0 degrees here oh that was a hit there because I'm messing around with this. Okay, let's just make it go. Right, so I have it to zero degrees now, and we have a full rotation of 180 degrees. So now that it's rotated, you want to make sure that both doors are exactly the same. So here I've actually put one too many here. Right, so I've now finished building the doors. I've set the angles, which I'll show you in a bit. But I just wanted to show you this part. Now, when this door is closed, this part of the block will be in this position. So you can lock it with this landing gear. However, when the door is open, since the rotor is at the very edge here, this will not have any exposure to any kind of blocks so just add another set of blocks here on the end so that you only need one landing gear to, ho to hold your whole door in place and that's it now if you want this door to function properly uh, without damaging your ship you'll have to take a few things into consideration So. The first thing is make sure that you have the braking torque at maximum and make sure your torque is definitely not at the maximum. I'd say around yeah basically between anything anything before that and let's say yeah maybe three. Three is still safe. Make sure that the angles are the same. So here you see for Rotor number 9, you have between 0 and 180 degrees, and for the fourth one, it's also 0 to 180 degrees. They rotate in the same direction, um, but since they're opposite each other, the doors will move in opposite directions, if that makes any sense. So here, if I just click on reverse, my doors are now rotating in the same direction, and the doors will come together without any incidents because the torque is not high enough for it to cause any damage and there's enough braking torque to break um, the movement. So that's how you build this door. Now for the deployable manable turret, uh, I'm not going to show this to you because it's just the same thing as the torpedo bay. You just put your rotor here, uh, make sure it's the same on each side, make sure you have a landing gear that can uh, um, lock it into place, put a door on top and you're done. So this is really simple, really quick, really easy. Right, now here we are at the final door design, the one with four rotors. And as you can see, I've color-coded this one to make things a little bit easier to understand. Now the blue blocks over here are where the rotors are situated. So basically underneath this block you'll have a rotor. The yellow blocks are the stabilizer blocks for each part of the door. And the red blocks represent the actual opening that the door creates once it's open. So let's go ahead and activate this um, this door and open it up. Obviously before the whole action group function came up, it's, this kind of design wasn't very um, useful in the sense that you had to really manually operate each of the rotors and 
it was you know a little bit of a hassle but now that you have the action group it just looks really nice opening all at the same time and closing all at the same time so as you can see here we've set all the rotors to a 90 degree angle they all rotate in the same direction and here you have your opening uh, where you can just fly your ship through or fly whatever you want through this now to actually build this thing we shall go over to this other platform right so now we have all four rotors opened up to the 90 degree angle and we can start by placing the first block so this will be obviously the block directly above the rotor which we will color code blue the next step is to build a 3x3 three three square with that block so two across and then we'll just build a small square here and then these four squares over here are what will actually come in front of the door right here so these represent the four squares over here then you'll need your stabilizer squares at the back I found these help but if you can oh but if you can do without these then that's okay as well and there you have it so all you, all you need to do now is to just make the same thing for each of the rotors remember they have to be identical because everything is symmetrical in this four door design okay so here we are we're done and let's go ahead and activate these doors now now if you've done everything correctly this should work the first time you try it let's just have a look and as you can see it seems to be working out perfectly no damage nothing whatsoever and that's that as for this last contraption the piston platform elevator um, you can refer to my other video on automatic elevators it describes this all in detail and shows you how to make one um, I'm not going to show you because it'll take up too much time so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope it was useful for you and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing new designs out there based on what I've shown you today if you have any questions just drop me a comment and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can